And uh, is a big weekend here at TV9, or 70 years ago, KCRI television, back when it went on the air. Dr. Jeff Stein, longtime friend, longtime caller, first time listener, welcome <laughs> into the program. First off, thanks for making the drive from your studios up in Waterloo to be with us this morning. JR, it is so good to be here. Congratulations to you and the team on this great new program. Well, and thank you much. We, we visited about it. Of course, if you maybe recognize the voice by now, KXEL <laughs> Radio, the voice of Iowa and the voice of pretty much the Midwest. <laughs> You are an, an accomplished author. You are a man who is steeped in the history of Iowa. And this is a very record, kind of record noteworthy, noteworthy year because everybody here in Eastern Iowa is celebrating this year. It's one of the most unique things across the country. You had on September 29th of 1953, no local television mm -hmm. stations. And by Thanksgiving, you had three yeah. because the federal government had frozen licenses. And once they figure out how to administer these licenses, Everybody wanted television, mm -hmm. and so on October 15th, 1953, TV9 first went on the air. This one right here. And look where we are, 70 years, and you've got a great book. If you're somebody who enjoys history and pictures and stories, this has it all. And we were just talking, you know, we've known each other for going on 20, almost 20 years now. How, you could probably do a whole new version of this book at this point. Well, the good thing is it's history, so it doesn't go out of style. Yeah. It stays current. But, you know, there are so many things about this building and the history of the station. Mm -hmm. You mentioned KCRI. Yeah. The reason it was not KCRG is that the folks at the Gazette had KCRG radio. Mm -hmm. They wanted to start a TV station. Well, not everybody who wanted a TV station could have one. And so the Gazette got into business with a group of theater owners. They also wanted a TV station. And so by banding together, they ensured that they would have one sooner. Well, the problem <laughs> is the theater owners wanted the Gazette to pay them a fee every time KCRG was mentioned because they thought it was publicity for the newspaper. Mm -hmm. So the Gazette said nuts to that. They called it <laughs> KCRI for Cedar Rapids, Iowa. But then, without the theater owners knowing, the Gazette changed the name of their radio station to KCRI to match. And as you can tell, that, <laughs> that relationship was not going to last. Within yeah. a year, the Gazette bought out their partners, mm -hmm. and it became the KCRG that we know now 70 years later. Well, and that's just one story. I mean, there's stories of Black Hawk County and fighting for a television station yeah. up there. There's yeah. here in Cedar Rapids, one built without bathrooms before it went on the air. And it's all mm -hmm. covered in this, which has pictures, has videos. And just to talk about ourselves here for a little bit, you provided some pictures. We've got a great slideshow. Right. Some never be seen, or never Never seen before pictures of this place. What are we looking at here? In the center is Edna Herbst. Now this goes back to the mid 40s. That's one of the uh, newsrooms from the 1940s. People remember Edna Herbst with the editorials. Mm -hmm. There is a young dapper Bob Brooks who of course did sports for so many years. There he is in the 1970s here in the TV9 studios. John Campbell and Doug Kreil and Denny Frary. That was a trio. Now, that is not Justin Roberts no. doing the weather. No, that is Dexter David Donovan III. You know, when you think of TV9, you think of the first alert weather team and the wall-to-wall -wall coverage that was pioneered by this station. Well, in the day, before all of that, there was a puppet <laughs> that literally did the weather at 10 o'clock, and I was a young boy, and it just scared the bejesus out of me. <laughs> to over see a puppet like that. Over yeah. the course of time, there was also a picture in there of Larry Haichu, mm -hmm. an anchor with Doug Kreil and Denny Frary, and a moment ago you saw a camera that said KCRI, and that is one of your predecessors, George Patrick, hosted the TV9 Morning Show yeah. for many years. That picture was from dialing for dollars which was mm -hmm. another favorite and and this is one of the things that's interesting that in the earliest days everything had to be live yeah. you didn't have videotape you didn't have a computer and what's really cool to me anyway is that here you are 70th anniversary you've got a brand new local live program you folks here do more local live programming than any other station in the market and so it, it kind of makes it come full circle. It's, it's kind of a, a back to where we came from moment. It so is, yes. we, you could come back weekly and just talk about history. I wish you would, but you also have a radio show that you yeah. do. Now, when you're not doing radio, <laughs> you're steeped in Iowa history. Yeah. I want people to know about this. Where can they get it and add it to their coffee table collection? The book is Making Waves, the People and Places of Iowa Broadcasting. If you go to totallyiowa.com, you can pick up a copy of that or a variety of other items, totallyiowa.com. Always good to see you, my friend. Thank you. I told you we'd get you on the radio show and we'd get you on the TV show, too. Look at this. 
Now and I have to go an to an your offer, show. And an offer of every week. And yeah. as I heard you say earlier, if it was said on TV, it has to be true. You can be here Monday starting at 8. <laughs> Dr. Stein, thanks for being here. Thank you. Coming up, perfect weather.